Hello and welcome to The Real World. My name is Cameron. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Real World YouTube channel. This channel is all about celebrating film, cinema, uh, movies. We're huge movie fanatics here and uh, we just want to talk about them. We want to talk about this art form um, that is the most popular art form uh, that exists today. Everyone goes to the movies, everyone watches movies at home. So uh, we wanted to talk about uh, all of our favorites. We have all kinds of different uh, subjects that we cover here in relation to movies. And today's episode is all about our top five favorite directors of all time. So this is going to be a really fun discussion. It's one I've been wanting to have for a while. And I am joined by my buddy, Bert. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How's it going, Cam? Doing well. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, this should be a really fun discussion. So let's kick it off. All right, folks. Well, on this episode of the Real World Podcast, we're going to kick things off with movie news as we usually do. The new trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This is the third in the Ant-Man franchise, part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it's coming out uh, in February, just a couple weeks away. So we wanted to discuss this new trailer. They kind of expanded on what we had seen before, and it looks like it's going to be uh, pretty epic. This one looks like it's going to be a big, sprawling storyline, all taking place in the quantum verse, the quantum realm. And uh, it looks like it's going to be full of bizarre characters, crazy environments. I mean, all kinds of bizarre stuff here. So um, I think it looks great. It's getting me more and more excited the more I'm seeing of this movie. I hope they don't give away anything else because it seemed like we got maybe a glimpse of the end of the movie here. Ant-Man versus Kang the Conqueror, this new villain that we have. And it looks pretty intense, too. It looks like it's kind of toning down the comedy a little bit and going more for a serious vibe here so those are kind of some of my initial thoughts on the trailer Bert what did you think of this one well I was so much more impressed with this trailer I mean I with the last one I mean that that kind of movie and a sequel to two movies I already like I'm definitely going to see it anyway sure and uh this one though might push me to get out to the theater and see it because, okay cool uh, yeah I thought it looked way better I don't I yeah I the first one the first trailer was more uh kind of what I expected Right. This one looked like they're, you know, that it's it's they're reaching a lot further, giving us a lot more right um, stuff we haven't seen before. A lot more yeah. intense, like you said. Yep. And uh, yeah, it, a lot of trippy kind of uh, visuals. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. So I'm I was pretty amazed uh, at what they're showing us. And uh, I'm I may go out to theater to see this one for sure now. Awesome. Yeah, that's kind of where I am, too. I just again, I think everything they've shown us every time has gotten better and better. Um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited about it. Revealed a little bit more, it seemed to me, about the plot where it seems like Kang is kind of uh, blackmailing Ant-Man to go do a heist for him. It's another heist kind of movie, which yeah, all the Ant-Man yeah. movies have, have kind of been that. And right. so, uh, yeah, that's that's really intriguing. I'm curious what he's going after. Why does he mm -hmm. need this object or item or whatever, whatever it is? And uh, obviously his daughter's involved. So, um, yeah. you know, we've got the whole family story there and and Hank and Pin and uh, 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 Janet are back, the Pym family and, and right. you know, that whole thing. So, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting setup. I want more Michael Douglas. He's always been an actor I liked a lot. Yeah, and I know he's older. He's got to be in the 70s, right? Sure. I, uh, I just I like him a lot. I do, so too. We'll get some more of him. Uh, maybe he'll suit up. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he kind of um, did a little bit in the last one, but it wasn't didn't last very long. So right, right, yeah. exactly, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, th yeah, this one looks uh looks really good. I wonder yeah. if they they weren't getting the greatest reaction that they thought they would from the first trailer. Maybe, you know? yeah, that's why they came out with this new one. Uh, yeah, probably they probably did, and they usually come out with two trailers for all their movies anyway. But I would I would expect they they kind of were like let's let's make sure we get people out to see this because. You know, Marvel fatigue, that's kind of a thing people are talking about online. Like, man, they put out so many movies, so many shows now on mm -hmm. Disney Plus. And so it's going right. to get more and more difficult for them to get people out to the theater. Um, yeah, that's right. If it's and just, so, you know, oh, another Marvel superhero film. You know, <laughs> right. Yeah. Just the right. I, I thought of what I was going to ask you. Kang, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now he's you said he's the next uh, big bad guy in, yeah. in the Marvel spectrum. So he's right uh like uh, how big and bad uh because 
I've never heard of him, obviously. Yeah, sure. Well, he he's he's a big one in the comics. You know, he he's he's uh, gone up against the Avengers many times in the comics. He's one of their their kind of big enemies that they go after. And his whole thing is time travel, so he can control time. Oh. Uh, he's got this, you know, all this technology that he uses. Um, he's oh, from okay. the future, and so he kind of comes back oh. to rule. And he's he's known as Kang the Conqueror because he kind uh-huh. of goes back in time and conquers all these kingdoms and all this right. stuff. And so. Yeah, his his kind of whole MO is the time travel, multiverse, quantum realm type stuff. And so that's why it makes a lot of sense, actually, for him to be in this Ant-Man movie and introduce okay. him this way. Um, right. I think a, a lot of fans are really, really excited about him. Jonathan Majors is playing him. He's an up and coming actor. Um, yeah, I really yeah. like what I've seen him in. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of his whole deal. The first um, of the new Avengers movies is going to be called The Kang Dynasty which is the title oh, right, of a comic right, book okay. run um, that where they all go, go against him. So this is kind of our really our first introduction to him setting mm-hmm. up all that's to come in, uh, you know, the phase four, five and six is called the, the multiverse saga. And so he's going to kind of be the big overarching villain, a lot like Thanos was for the first three yeah. phases. Um, right. And so, yeah, this will, this will be exciting to see what they do with him. Yeah. And Thanos was, physically imposing whereas right. uh this guy is maybe more about the tech and the time travel and that kind of stuff not that he's exactly. not physically imposing but i mean sure obviously thanos is just this giant beast of a guy <laughs> right right uh even exactly. before he gets you know other powers so right right exactly yeah, but yeah. isn't thanos supposed to, wasn't he supposed to be like the second strongest or most powerful uh, being even before he got the uh, stones. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you're not counting like the celestial kind of characters, then yeah, yeah he's, yeah. I mean, he went toe to toe with Hulk and, and beat him up. So yeah, he's, yeah. he was already very, very powerful right. before the stones. Gotcha. Yeah. But either way. Yeah. It looks, looks really good. Yeah. Fantastic. The, the marketing is on point in this one. <laughs> yeah. I agree completely. Yeah. I will be there on uh, I think it's February 16th when this movie hits mm, theater. Okay. So excited to watch it. Yeah, me too. All right. Let's move on to our next story, which is uh planet of the apes. I'm a big planet of the apes fan. I like that entire franchise going all the way back to 1968. I've got the big box set of all the movies on Blu-ray. So um, the new film that's continuing the story from the most recent trilogy, which kind of rebooted the whole mm-hmm. franchise rise of the planet of the apes, dawn of the planet of the apes and war for the planet of the apes. Um, it's continuing with kingdom of the planet of the apes. This is set to come out next year. And okay. so they're filming now. Uh, they just added an actor. I like a lot to the cast. William H. Macy oh, um, yeah. has been added to the cast of this new apes movie. I don't know who he's playing. There's, there's no, um kind of idea about who he might be playing if he's playing one of the apes if he's playing a human character that's going to interact right, with right. them we don't know right. so um i'm just excited that he's joined the cast west ball is directing he's a young director he directed the maze runner trilogy which is oh, i think yeah. a very underrated trilogy i read all those books mm-hmm. and went to the theater and saw all the movies and really enjoyed them so i'm uh, really excited to see his vision for this new apes i think it's going to be a new trilogy to add on to what they've already established. So um, yeah, we don't know really much about the story. We know that it's, I think a decade or two after uh, the last movie where that left off. Okay. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with this new one. Um, are you a William H. Macy fan? I was just going to ask you, I do like him a lot. What's your yeah. favorite movie of his? Oh, that's tough. Or favorite he's, role. Favorite he's role been in these. so many good ones. I love him in Fargo. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he's yeah. great in that. He's great uh-huh. in. I mean, we talked on the podcast about Jurassic Park. I think he's great in that third Jurassic Park movie. Right. Um, right. What's What's yours? I would say Old Dogs because he's so oh, funny in it. <laughs> that is a funny one. Yeah, he is funny yeah. in that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that that's the first one. That's the pilot. I, I've seen many many movies with him in it. He's a very yeah. very interesting uh, sort of uh, guy. That I mean, you almost would call him a character actor, but I mean that's kind of a silly term. But right, he's he just adds something uh, fun to every movie he's in. Usually, <laughs> right? It, it, isn't he also uh, he protects the president in Air Force One? Isn't he also that guy? Oh, I think he's yeah, yeah, he is in that definitely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, he's he's a good actor. I like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Curious <laughs> um, to see what he does there. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That that's always a good addition. Yeah, and we had talked about this coming up way back. Um, I I got to sit down and watch that newer trilogy. Right. I have not done that yet. Yeah. Um, and you said this one does not have circus in it, right? No Andy Circus. Yeah, in I don't this, think uh, I don't. Movie. 
right? Yeah, I don't think he's going to be involved in any okay. way. Um, okay. Unfortunately, I mean, they'll probably he's consult him at least, you know, because uh-huh. he was a such a big part of not just acting yeah. in the first three, but, um, you know, coming up with story and producing. I think he produced them mm-hmm. too. So, um, okay. yeah, I'm sure they at least consulted him on, you know, how they're right. moving forward with it. And, uh, okay. but yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with it. Yeah. All right. So next thing I wanted to cover, you know, I'm a big physical media guy. I wanted to kind of start incorporating more of this stuff into our podcast. And so I wanted to talk about some upcoming 4K releases. So 4K right. is the newest mm-hmm. video format for the, the home theater systems. Um, I'm starting to convert everything to 4K now. Um, and so I wanted to look at kind of the release dates of some of these upcoming 4K releases that I'm excited about some that I'll be adding to my collection. So um, just next month in February, we've got a few that I'm excited for. One of them is Warm Bodies. Oh, the zombie movie. You know this one, I right? I like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that in the theater, actually. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that one. Nicholas Holt, Teresa Palmer. It's a really funny, like, rom-com zombie movie. It's a really yeah, weird combo. Yeah, but it's it, very unique. It works really well. So um, that one will drop on February 7th. That is coming to the 4K okay. format, finally. Um, another one I know you're also a fan of, and I am too, Dragonheart. Um, oh, is, that's coming out in 4K? Yeah. Oh, good, 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 because prior releases did not look good. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping they go back to the original camera negatives, do a full restoration. Are they better? Um, yeah, yeah, oh, I, I really hope so. be a good one. Right, yeah. So that'll Fantastic. drop February 21st, and then also dropping February 21st, a classic Western. I'm a fan of The Magnificent Seven. Oh, sure. um, is dropping as well on the 4K format. And, um, you know, if they're shot on film, they usually look even better on 4K mm-hmm. because film just has so much more information on it um, than, you know, shooting, mm-hmm. you know, digitally. So uh, those are all ones that I'm I'm really looking forward to coming in March. Um, another one of my favorites is The Mask of Zorro uh, oh, with Antonio Banderas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that'll yeah. drop uh, March that's 7th. I almost picked up. On March 7th. Yeah. I almost picked that one up on Blu-ray, but yeah. some of these, you know, that I have never, well, I had a DVD way back. Sure. But uh, I've been kind of waiting and, uh, and then I, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cheap to get that on Blu-ray, but I'm like, right. ah, I might wait for a four, a possible 4k, hopefully, yep. you know, so yep. there's a couple now. Uh, yeah, definitely. Here. Definitely. And the Blu-ray yeah. looks good of that. I have the Mask of Zorro Blu-ray yeah. and it looks really good, but I'm I looking at upgrade. DVD. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> for sure. Um, also March 7th, a movie I like called Mildred Pierce. That's going to go come oh. to the Criterion collection. They just started getting in the 4k, I think in the past, like one or two years. So very recently, um, they started releasing some 4k titles and that'll be one, uh, also in March, the Prince of Egypt, one of my favorite animated movies that'll be dropping on March 14th and streets of fire. That's kind of a cult classic by Walter Hill from the eighties. Uh, it's a really fun movie. That's mm. also dropping on March 14th. Another classic courtroom drama, 12 Angry Men, one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, That's dropping March 28th. So looking into April, just a couple more here. Uh, The Maltese Falcon, another classic black and white film noir with Humphrey Bogart, April 11th. That one will be released. Uh, Cool Hand Luke, also coming on the 11th. That stars uh, Paul Newman. And then um, Rebel Without a Cause with James Dean um, will be coming to the 4K format on April 25th. So just in the next couple months, we've got a lot to look forward to as 4K collectors. So yeah, I'll have to figure out uh, how I can budget and and add some of those to my collection. Yeah. In Criterion, I really hope they uh, update some of their older ones to 4K. Like, uh, I mean, I'm speaking about uh, The Rock and R. Oh. because. Those were in Criterion, right. right? That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, those two, um, I don't think either are in 4K. And I'm waiting because mm. I want to go from DVD to <laughs> to the 4K. Definitely. Or two I'd really like to add to my collection. And so hopefully yeah. Criterion will do that. I, I don't know if yeah. they've historically done that, gone back and updated one of their older ones or not. Yeah, I don't know um, as far as the DVD era goes, because I, I started collecting Criterion uh, when I got the Blu-ray player. So I'm not sure how far back they've gone. But I know that Mildred Pierce, it was a Blu-ray that's now coming to 4K. So I'm sure they'll okay. start doing that with a lot of their catalog titles that they've released before. You would think so. I mean, those two that have a pretty mass audience too. Yeah, you know, for sure. Goes. Yeah. Definitely. Moving on to our next uh, item here. I just wanted to discuss a little bit about award season. So we're kind of entering award season. Um, the Golden Globes just happened. Uh, we've got the, the SAG Awards, the DGA, the WGA, all those awards 
ceremonies are kind of happening now leading up to of course the the academy awards which will drop in uh, yeah. in march early march so we're looking forward to doing uh, an entire academy awards podcast talking about our favorite films of 2022 I know, Bert, you and I have both been watching a lot of the ones that we we missed in theaters and on streaming. So um, I just kind of wanted to look at kind of the landscape as it sits right now of kind of what's being nominated. Mostly, I'm going to look at the Golden Globes because that just happened. Starting off with Best Film of the Year, the ones that were nominated were Triangle of Sadness, Glass Onion, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Banshees of Inishirin, Babylon, Top Gun Maverick, Tar, Elvis, Avatar The Way of Water, and the film that won was The Fablemans. So um, that was kind of their their rundown of, of best movies of the year. Um, when it comes to animated, they nominated Turning Red, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Inu O, and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, um, which is the film that won. So um, I was excited to hear that. I really like that movie. So um, that one very well might be in my my top five when we end up doing that 2022 list. It's on Netflix right now if you haven't watched it. Let's look at director. Steven Spielberg won for The Fablemans. Um, Daniels were also nominated for Everything Everywhere All at Once. James Cameron for Avatar. Martin McDonough uh, for Banshees of Inishirin. And Baz Luhrmann for Elvis. So those were kind of the director's run down there. Um, screenplay. Martin McDonough won for Banshees of Inishirin. Uh, we had Todd Field, Daniels, Sarah Polly, and then Spielberg and Kushner again for Fablemans. Actor Austin Butler won for Elvis. Uh, we also had Brendan Fraser nominated for The Whale, Hugh Jackman, uh, Bill Nye, and Jeremy Pope. Colin Farrell won for Ban- Banshees of Inishirin. Uh, we also had Adam Driver, Ray Fiennes, Diego Calva, and Daniel Craig all nominated. So that's kind of the rundown of the actors, actresses. Um, Kate Blanchett won for Tar. Uh, we also had Olivia Coleman, Viola Davis, Anna Diarmas, Michelle Williams, Michelle Yeoh, uh, Leslie Manville, Margot Roby, Anya Taylor Joy, and Emma Thompson were all nominated as well. So um, quite an interesting lineup there. Um, supporting actors, we have uh, Kiwe Kwan. Uh, who won for Everything Everywhere All at Once, Brendan Gleeson, Barry Keegan, uh, Brad Pitt, Eddie Redmayne. Um, And then for Supporting Actress, Angela Bassett won for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And also nominated were Carrie Condon, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Donnie DeLeon, and Carrie Mulligan. So that's kind of the rundown of all the actors and actresses. And then um, I just wanted to mention two more categories for score. The best score went to Justin Hurwitz for Babylon. And then also nominated were Banshees of Inishirin, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Women Talking, and The Fablements. Those were all nominated for score. Yeah, really interesting lineup. Um, curious to see, you know, it's never one-to-one with the Academy. Right. The Academy can, you know, nominate whoever they want. But yeah. it's just kind of an idea of, you know, movies right. that are getting a lot of praise right now. And so we'll have to just wait and see until March. Or I guess they'll announce the nominees before then. But um, yeah. whenever they announce that, we'll obviously talk about it here on the podcast. Anything stand out to you there, Bert? Uh, well, well, for one thing, I was just going to say that, uh, yeah, probably a lot, if not most of the nominees will be the same. But um, I would say it's probably the case that often the, the winners don't match up from Golden Globe to oscar right I right mean, i mean there's numerous good ones in there the the sure. smaller independent films i'm gonna have to seek those out because you yeah know, they're hard to find to the yeah to the, the big budget popcorn kind of movies uh sure but i'll i'll be tracking some of those down for sure prior yeah. to the awards ceremony so we can uh run those down i know cool. you've watched a few i've seen a few few reviews on your channel so. yeah yeah all, all the all the new review this whole new review series i've been doing um real quick reviews they basically have mm-hmm. all been 2022 movies that i've missed so yeah um yeah, yeah several of these are on there um banshees of inishirin is really high on my list it's on hbo max okay. right now so okay um i'll definitely be watching that soon but uh yeah there's no way i mean you and i will be able to watch every single one of these obviously so 
you know, when we come up with our own list, they'll be very different, but, um, you know, <laughs> I uh, will probably, but who knows? <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, looking, looking forward to that and, uh, and see, see who comes out on top. Yeah. Nice to see a couple mainstream, like a Marvel film had, you know, at least one, uh, victory at the gold. That's Globes. right. I mean, in an era where people are thinking, oh, this is a lot of superhero films. Well now, <laughs> right. you know, here's a uh, golden globe award from one. So yeah, oh, that's good. Um, I and think a giant film like Avatar two, yeah, uh, being nominated. I mean, uh, so yeah, it's not all independent films, right? So, exactly. Yeah, it is. It is good to the see Gold Globes. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. No, it is good to see those kind of mainstream movies that audiences are familiar with getting recognition because just as much you know time and effort, if not more, goes into those as well. Um, you know, they may not be right. seen as more artistic or whatever you want to call it, That's but the thing, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it, it's good that they're getting recognition because uh, I think they, they ultimately they figured out that they had to do this because people weren't watching these award shows because they don't know any of the movies that are nominated, you know. And if yeah. they want people to tune in, they they they're gonna have to you know branch out a little bit into these other movies that people are really interested in and watching. So it, yeah, that's yeah. a good sign. And I don't see the point of ignoring bigger films just because they may not be deemed as artistic. Right. Because I find a lot of art in, in the bigger budget films. Yeah. Uh, I mean, certainly there's a lot of art that goes into it and effort. And um, I mean, you know, I mean, as much or more as, as the independent films. But yeah, they're just not as uh, arty per se. So if you get, you know, five films nominated for Best Picture that no one's ever heard of, which has happened then most people are like, I don't know any of these films, you know, not, this doesn't apply to me. It's what people think. And you exactly. and I might track down a few of those, but most people are not gonna. Sure. Yep. You're exactly right. So yeah, it, uh, it bodes well, I think for the future. And uh, of course, everyone's going to tune in anyway, just to see if anyone gets slapped. So um, right. that'll be interesting. I'm, I'm just curious that. what kind of jokes they're going to make about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think right, Jimmy right. Kimmel is hosting. So I'm sure there'll be a couple okay. of mentions of, the slap slap gate as it's known it's now. A, yeah. It's a touchy thing and it's still not resolved in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's a topic for another day. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we'll talk more about that <laughs> as season approaches, but um, okay, folks, well, that's it. That's all I had for movie news. That's kind of the big stories going on in the world of movies right now. So we're going to jump now into our list. Top five favorite directors of all time. Here we go. All right, folks, it's time to jump into our top five favorite directors list. But before we do that, we wanted to discuss how we made these selections. So obviously, there are so many directors we could pick from. Uh, it, this was a really hard list for me to make. Um, but, you know, you had to whittle it down to five. So we just kind of wanted to talk about how we made these selections. You know, the questions I asked myself were questions like, you know, who are the filmmakers that I watch the most? Who are the ones that inspire me? Who are the ones that tell stories that I care about, that I can relate to? Which which ones are the most memorable? Which ones stay with me over time? All these are, are questions I ask. You know, which ones do I just enjoy the most, that I'm most entertained by, uh, that I get the most out of, kind of. Those were kind of the, the, you know, criteria I had. And, you know, we can talk a little bit about, you know, just kind of what makes a great director. Um, and, and that's another way that, that we, I think, came, came up with these lists. For me, a, a great director, number one, is a strong visual story, storyteller. Film, as we know, is primarily a visual um, format, a visual storytelling uh, format. So uh, it, are the visuals memorable? Do they stay with me? Um, do they tell the story? Um, even with the sound off, would, would I be able to figure out what's going on in the story? Um, so that was number one for me. Number two was, does this director get believable performances out of his cast? So, you know, the director's primary job on set is not just to tell the story visually, but to make sure that the actors are emoting in a way and performing in a way um, that lines up with his vision for the story. So that was another thing that I thought about a lot. The, the third thing was, uh, does this director have an original voice? Uh, does he have a distinct style? Can I tell when this director's movie is on, um, even if it's you know one of his movies I haven't seen maybe or something like that, can I tell that this is made by that director, that filmmaker? So number four, I thought about how good of a collaborator is he? Does he get people 
that are going to help him tell this story. Um, so, you know, you'll see a lot of times directors working with the same people over and over again. And that's because they found a great collaborator that they can easily communicate their vision to Mm -hmm. and that, you know, work with them to tell, tell a story in a cohesive, coherent way. And then the last thing I thought of, you know, is this director an innovator? I'm all all about, you know, innovating, doing new things, original things, things that are different that I haven't Mm -hmm. seen before. Um, And that's a big part of it as well. You know, furthering the technology of, of filmmaking and, Um, you know, just even if it's not just the technology side, just the way you use the camera, the way you use the lighting, the special effects, you know, um, the, the music, Uh, I mean, all all kinds of things go into it. So, um, those are kind of the five criteria that I mainly looked Mm -hmm. at, um, Bert, what was kind of your thought going into this? Yeah. Some of the things were, uh, you know, um, some, sometimes I looked at sheer volume, like if a director had 10 films that I enjoyed, I mean, that's quite a few, Yeah. Uh, but then, then I compared it to a director where maybe they, there were five films I liked, but I loved those five films. Right. And so that might supplant the other one. So, um, but ultimately I wanted a fair bit of variety. So I kind of went with the, uh, the, uh, the kind of the age old idea of if you were stranded you know somewhere with uh just uh you know movies to watch and you could only take the you know the catalog of five directors with you right. which one do you want so i'm not going to just pick you know only action movies or you know right. I mean? so i try to get kind of a good flavor um and so uh but that was a great um a- analysis of what makes a good director i don't know if i can say a lot more than that except that uh i mean obviously yeah the technical parts of it um are what take it from just a a good storyteller to um on multiple viewings you're seeing the 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 layers and the um the shot setups and uh you know those extra things um yeah and then you know you mentioned vision i you know just Mm -hmm. some of these things that these directors have to pull together like you think of a peter jackson with lord of the rings or you know any number of these giant projects I mean, more than 99% of the people alive would have no idea even where to begin with something like that. Right. And so it, it's, it's an astonishing feat. And so yeah. that, that is impressive as well. Um, having that vision and, and often without a template, you know, what, right. what did Peter Jackson other than the book, but he had to bring, right. you know, all that to life. That's just one example, but, yeah. uh, and that is incredible. So those are the kind of things I look for too. Awesome. Great. That's a great rundown. So Okay, folks. Well, that's how we came up with our top five lists. Now, of course, like we mentioned before, there are so many directors we could talk about all day, but uh, we could hold, had to whittle it down to five. So we wanted to take a good chunk of our time here and talk about honorable mentions because there are so many we could talk about. So let's do that now. All right. So let's look at some of these honorable mentions that we have. I separated mine kind of by era um, in a way. I, I'm going to start with Filmmakers who have already deceased, Um, they've passed away, their age was the golden age of cinema. Um, So I've got a few here. Uh, The first one is Frank Capra. It's a Wonderful Life. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Uh, Just a a great American filmmaker. Um, Sidney Lumet. He's a guy that did uh, one we mentioned earlier, 12 Angry Men, uh, Dog Day Afternoon, Network, a lot of really, really good classic films. Uh, David Lean, uh, he's a a British filmmaker who made movies like uh, Lawrence of Arabia, The Bridge on the River Kwai, uh, great kind of big epic uh, cinematic experiences that are well worth taking. And then I also wanted to mention Sergio Leone, uh, who is an Italian filmmaker. He's known for his spaghetti westerns, uh, The Good, Bad and the Ugly, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Uh, Really, really great, very influential um, films that he made over his career as well. So those are the ones I'll start with. Bert, do you have any? Yeah, and I categorized by uh, genre, uh, sort of general genre. Uh, so I'll throw a few out there. So, uh, for instance, in comedy, um, I, a few that I are standouts for me are Harold, Harold Ramis, um, uh, you know, Caddyshack, Vacation, Groundhog Day, Multiplicity, um, just just nailed all, all of those yeah he's great um yeah and he directed i think he directed a couple episodes of the office as well okay um and uh and then uh john hughes i mean oh, yeah. i must put him on my top five um 16 candles breakfast mm-hmm. club weird science which is actually a really funny movie okay. um, <laughs> um ferris bueller i mean yeah. um, planes trains automobiles uncle buck mm. curly sue which is a really cute movie oh yeah um so 
yeah he's uh yeah he's a, a great one too um definitely peter yeah peter and bobby farrelly um oh yeah i, I personally love the both dumb and dumber movies well especially <laughs> the first one and then there's a movie called uh kingpin i don't know if you've ever seen oh kingpin. i've seen that yeah that's funny yeah that's really funny <laughs> yeah it's really irreverent but right. it's so funny oh there's so many <laughs> funny parts in that movie right. uh and then there's something about mary uh mm. shallow how which is a really good movie I oh think. yeah um yep. i i i guess they did fever pitch too which was a pretty decent oh, okay. Atlanta comedy okay um and then i even liked the three stooges movie that came out about 10 years ago okay i thought it was quite a great tribute i don't know if you saw that one i did not no okay yeah that was really good too um so yeah uh the fairly brothers they've turned in quite a few uh, yeah. good comedies yeah another one i'll mention is paul feig and uh he's just uh, i mean my favorite comedy maybe of all time is the heat uh, right right because it's yeah it's funny all the way through so i had to mention him he's also directed a few episodes of the office i believe um and also uh the movie spy um last christmas which i guess you didn't really like but i love that yeah. one um for christmas time right right um and uh and then i even like the recent ghostbusters movie with the girls uh, oh the okay one from okay 2016. never saw yeah. Oh, you never saw it? Uh, I, I mean, it's got a lot of comedy in it. It, yeah. it kind of falls apart at the end, but okay. I thought that was pretty good. But Paul Feig is another one, a more recent director yeah. uh, for comedy. So there's those are a few notable ones for comedy. I Great. To yeah, those are all good picks for sure. Um, I'll move into my next category, which is what I called veteran filmmakers. These are guys who are 60 plus, you know, they're kind of, okay. uh, you know, in, in the, the latter part of their careers, Mm -hmm. uh, um, but still churning out great, great work. Maybe some of their best. Um, Hayao okay. Miyazaki, he's a Japanese filmmaker, uh, and, uh, does animation. He's run Studio Ghibli. Um, and uh, he's made some great movies, Castle in the Sky, Porco Rosso. Um, just uh, great, great, great movies. My Neighbor Totoro, uh, that the whole family can watch together. Really, really fun. Our family enjoys all of his films. Um, Martin Scorsese, uh, who's now 80 years old. Um, he, he continues to churn out great movies every, you know, a couple of years. It seems like, uh, of course, some of his classics are raging bull, uh, good fellas, you know, he's done stuff like Hugo more recently. Um, just a really, really great, great filmmaker. Um, Ron Howard, uh, who's, uh, 68 years old now. Um, he's wow. of course done so many great movies. We've talked about him multiple times here before. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites is Willow. Uh, beautiful mind i know you're a big fan of uh, yeah, rush yeah. uh so many great ones mm -hmm. uh, recently mm -hmm. he just did 13 lives uh, which is one of my mm -hmm. favorites of last year as well so he's a great one um james cameron of course you know he's also 68 same age as ron howard just made his second avatar film uh he's the only director with three films in the top five highest grossing movies of all time <laughs> it's crazy uh between Wait, now is one of those avatar 2 Correct. Avatar one, Avatar two now is in the top five. Is it? And, okay. And, wow. Yep, wow. Yep, okay. Yeah. One, 1. 1.8 billion was the last number I wow. saw. Wow. Okay. So it's still climbing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going gotcha. to probably hit 2 billion any, any time now. So yeah. So both his Avatar films, of course, Titanic, uh, True Lies, uh, the first two Terminator movies, two of my favorites of all time. So another great one I could have easily had on this top five. Um, the Coen brothers, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of, I think they do a lot of interesting stuff. Um, in the realm of comedy, and they've done a lot more serious stuff recently. No Country for Old Men, um, True Grit, uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou was a great one that I really enjoy. So they've collaborated and, and made tons of great movies. Um, Brad Bird is a director I like. He started an animation with Iron Giant and The Incredibles, Ratatouille. Um, he's now branched out in the live action. He did Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Um, he also did Tomorrowland, which I think is really underrated movie. Mm. Um, he's actually now gone. One. What's that? I haven't seen that one Tomorrowland. Oh, okay. Yeah. You should check it out. It's a Disney film with uh, George Clooney came out, okay. I think in 2015. Uh, uh -huh. I, wrote, didn't, I remember it. Yeah. Didn't make hardly any money, unfortunately, but, um, it's a good movie. Uh, he's going back to animation. Now he's working on a movie he's had in development for a long time called Ray Gunn, uh, which mm. is going to be like a futuristic kind of noirish sci-fi uh, okay. animated movie which i'm really looking forward to and then the last one i'll mention in this category is sam raimi uh who's another guy definitely could have been on this list would probably make it if i did a top five or top 10 he would probably be in there evil dead trilogy spider-man trilogy um dark man doctor strange he even did a western called quick in the dead uh just he's, he's done all kinds of different things just has one of those guys with very specific style you know that i like a yeah. lot so 
Um, right. Yeah, that's kind of that category. What did, what did you have next? So I'll, I'll look at action next since you brought up um, James Cameron, for instance. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the guy started the Terminator series and the Alien series. I mean, yeah. I mean that alone is uh, is quite a quite a, a feat, I guess you could say. Right. Well, he he did the second Alien. He didn't do the first. Oh, one. that's right. Yeah, that's right. That so was Ridley, Ridley Scott. Scott. The first yeah. one. What am I yeah. saying? Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about Ridley Scott. So I think. I oh just yeah, got for him sure. Confused. Yeah, right. That's true. He continued right. the Alien series, <laughs> right. but I mean, just some. Uh, you know, the thing is, he's just got a more brief resume. Otherwise, he probably would be in my top five. Right. Um, right. And, and not to knock it, because he's made some. Tr- you know, again, a smaller number of films that are really great in a lot of instances Um, right so yeah he's good um i guess uh the one that maybe hurt about the most to not put in my top five was Zack snyder oh i I had him in my top five but ultimately i had to just slightly oust him (laughs) right right (laughs) i mean he's so good i mean so many movies that are just terrific right he also though um doesn't have that like he, it's not like he has 10 or 15 that I like, right. Really only about a handful, okay. but those are really good. Yeah. And he's made, you know, unfortunately a couple that I didn't think were, they weren't terrible, but they weren't sure. as good as, uh, so anyway, Zack Snyder though, obviously he's just, uh, you know, it's his sort of high gloss polished, you know, world, world building. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. Can't, yeah. can't wait for, you know, for his next one. <laughs> right. Uh, that we talked about last week. Um, a right. couple guys, Anthony and Joseph Russo. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I probably should have put these guys in my top five. I don't know. I mean, uh, the, the Marvel films they've made have been, you know, there's some of the, my favorite movies of all time, all right. of them, you know, right. civil war, winter soldier, infinity war and game. I mean, they're just tremendous. Yep. Um, and the gray man was good too. It does. He doesn't really divert or hasn't diverted a lot from that, or at least in films that I've liked, uh, right. I shouldn't say he, they, right. uh, so I, because it's been kind of the same sort of film, Right. I didn't put him in my top five. Yeah, but... one one you should check out. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's their first film. It's called Welcome to Collinwood. Oh, I've um, heard of it. Okay. Highly recommend it. It's really. I, I think it's okay. their first or second movie. Um, okay. It's different. It, it's more comedic. Yeah. It's uh, okay. it's like a heist okay. movie. It's got a great oh. cast. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've seen that one, and I've seen um, another one they did. I felt they branched out a little bit. Was a mo- movie called Cherry. Uh, I think it was an Apple oh. TV plus exclusive with Tom Holland as like a soldier oh, Tom, who comes really? back. Yeah. It's a soldier who comes back from I like Tom war. Holland lot, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth checking out. It's much darker, okay. um, more okay. intense, but um, yeah. They, so they've branched out a little bit. Mm-hmm. I would like to see them do more, you know, I mean, right. I've only seen like what, I guess six or seven of their movies. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, but definitely check those out if you haven't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Uh, and then a couple guys uh, that have just done some good sort of taught action movies. Uh, Doug Lyman, um, you know, he did Edge of Tomorrow, which is one of my favorite. It's I don't know, it's like my sixth, seventh favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Uh, Jumper is really good. I thought oh, yeah. uh, Chaos Walking, I thought was very good. Um, did you yeah. see that one? I did. I, I I thought it was a great concept. I just feel like the execution wasn't fully there. It was such a really? big okay. idea. I felt like yeah, he didn't yeah. balance it all quite as well okay. as he could have, but okay visuals was were good the performances were good yeah, um, yeah i just wasn't i wasn't over the moon about it gotcha yeah yeah, yeah. it wasn't five star or anything but yeah. i thought it was, I, it was way better than i was expecting Let's right that way. right <laughs> so doug lyman's had a few good ones yeah. um uh and then um paul greengrass is another guy mm. uh most people probably never heard of paul greengrass but <laughs> right. i mean he did born supremacy united 93 born yeah. ultimatum mm-hmm. uh, uh captain phillips just yeah. some of these really sort of tense tense movies you know right. all of them you know so he's he's yeah. one that i like uh quite a bit so those are a few from the action genre excellent that's great um so i'll move on now to what i call established filmmakers so this is guys who aren't haven't quite hit their their 60s they're not veterans yet they're all kind of in their 50s um and and making great stuff so um i'll start with with peter jackson who actually he's actually 61 so he's a little bit past but i included him there because i feel like he's part of the same kind of group um of course lord of the rings trilogy king kong which i've actually got on in the background over here right watching i'm a huge fan of king kong his king kong movie have you seen the extended cut no no but uh over three hours um, it's great (laughs) yeah i i I probably should rewatch. it just seemed like it was uh it kind of like three different movies in one. Okay. You know? I could, I could see that. I could see that. Um, yeah. And I think there was a scene where, weren't there some uh, uh, dinosaurs or not dinosaurs, some uh, animals that were trampling and, and yeah, there's uh, dinosaurs in it. 
there's dinosaurs in it. Oh okay. yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, it just, the CGI didn't really seem good, but that okay. you're talking about a 20, it's like a 20 year old movie. Right. right. So I'm just thinking back to the theater when I watched it. So. Yeah. I, I've got, I just got the 4k and it's oh. stunning. I mean, it really? is, okay. it looks, it looks incredible. Um, yeah. Think so the CGI holds up in it. I think it does. I really okay, do. Maybe, I mean, there's I'm a thinking cu- wrong. Maybe there's I'm a couple wrong. moments maybe where it's like, mm. eh, it's not as great as it could be, but <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the, they utilize the performance capture with Andy Serkis plays Kong. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and so I thought, it, I think it's really well done. I really like it. Okay. The extended cut might help bridge ah. those okay. things that you're talking about where it feels like it doesn't yeah. fit. There's scenes that yeah. I think he added in that make it flow better. That's good um, to know. I'm willing to yeah. take a, sh- a shot on it again because you should. Uh, uh, yeah. Great filmmaker and uh, uh, some great talent in it too, you know? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So yeah, I had to mention him. Um, Had to mention John Favreau. This is a guy I really like. Iron Man, (laughs) Zathura, Chef, uh, Jungle Book, uh, just, you know, Elf, of course, we talked about recently Elf. So uh, yeah, he's great. Um, He's got an improv. Yeah. yeah, He's got an improv background. And so he does a lot of uh, improvisation on his sets a lot, which is fun. Hmm. Uh, James Mangold, you know, he's quickly become one of my favorites over the past few years. And I went back last year and watched a lot of his earlier movies that I hadn't seen. Oh, and man, just such great movies. Every single one of them. Uh, my favorites being Logan, uh, Ford v. Ferrari, right. uh, 310 to Yuma with um, Christian the Bale. And I like that yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was so good. good. Great Western, mm-hmm. modern Western remake of, of the original, which is also yeah. great. But um, right. Yeah, he's just a super talented guy. He's making the mm-hmm. new indie Indiana Jones movie. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Gore Verbinski is a guy who yeah. did the Pirates trilogy. Right, um, right. I also am a huge fan of Rango, his animated film. Okay. And The Lone Ranger, I thought was really good. And a lot of you people did? didn't like it. Yeah, I really like that movie. I don't know that I ever saw it, to be honest. Yeah. I don't have ever heard anybody say it was good. I know. I know. <laughs> this is one of those I'll probably be, bring up on our Defending Bad Movies podcast okay, soon. Fair enough. Yeah. Because it is, I think it's a blast. Uh, really? I have a great time okay. watching it. Yeah. Matt Reeves, this is a guy who's another one of these younger guys who's becoming more established as he goes. He did the um, most recent two Planet of the Apes movies, Dawn and War. And then he okay. did, um, he started with Cloverfield. That was his, yeah, his breakout film. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he just did The Batman, which I'm a huge fan of as well. So um, he keeps making great movies that I, I really enjoy. Um, I know you weren't, weren't as crazy about that one, but. Um, I was mad. Yeah. <laughs> um, another guy, a guy who's actually a good friend of his is J.J. Abrams. Really? Um, oh. Yeah, they're they're good friends. They've been friends for a while. And so, um, you know, J.J., of course, you know. Well, he had something to do with uh, Cloverfield, didn't he? Yeah, J.J. produced it. Yeah, he, he produced, produced that. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so J.J. got started in TV and mm-hmm. uh, made his way into film with Mission Impossible 3. That was his first film. Tom Cruise gave him his big okay. break. He watched the show Alias. Gotcha. He was a huge fan. He's like, I need to get this guy to do the next Mission movie. So he gotcha. did MI3, which kind of, to me, is what started this whole new, the new era of Mission. They all kind yeah, of exactly. based yeah. it loosely on that team dynamic and and that whole thing right. so this two is kind of out there three is the one that kind of set it on the current right uh, yes series exactly of films. yeah mm-hmm. yeah so he 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 kind of revitalized that franchise he did the same thing with star trek and star wars mm-hmm. um he's right. made you know great movies like super eight as well so pretty big fan of him chris nolan inception dark knight trilogy memento so many great movies he's made over his career um and such a distinct style as well um, and then M. Night, I had to bring up M. Night Shyamalan because this guy, again, he makes some great, great movies. He's just made some that aren't great, you know, and so that's why he didn't ultimately make my list. Um, so that's the kind of group of of established filmmakers I have. What what else do you have? That's a great list. Yeah, it's so hard <laughs> to not include some of these guys. I know. Oh, 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 painful sometimes. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll throw out a few in the horror category. Um, one of them was M. Night, since you just mentioned it. Um, and I mean, some of his are more drama like the village, but, right. um, yeah, six cents, um, signs, um, he was the writer of devil, but we're concentrating on, uh, <laughs> directing, right, but, right. uh, I mean, I even like last airbender. I sure. even <laughs> like the visit. Um, okay. See that one. I still haven't seen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's decent. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's one particularly scary scene in it. Um, and then, um, the unbreakable series, uh, I'm, I'm I'm mixed on, but I I mm. do kind of like all of them, but mm. I I don't go 
Gaga over any of them, you know. But right. anyway, he's just done um, many, many um, solid movies and some great ones. So he's a good right. one. I got to put Jordan Peele in there. Only yeah. three movies, but he's three for three, right? And and they're not they're not garbage movies, you know. They're no. they're uh, quality layered movies. Yep. I mean, they're so they're so good, all three of them. Um, yep. I want to get uh, Nope on 4K at some point, but yeah, it looks great. Um, I do have Us, and I want to get out uh, get okay. it out as well. Um, cool, 4K too. But yeah. Uh, so then uh, the third one I'll mention, the last one I'll mention in horror is James Wan. Almost oh, put yeah. him in my top five. James Wan. Yeah. He started the Insidious series, right? The Saw series, the Conjuring mm-hmm. series. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, he's just he's great at telling stories that scare people. You know. Yeah. Uh, he even helmed a Mortal Kombat film and a Fast and Furious film. Yes, you know? that's right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he's got quite a lot of range. So James yeah. Wan, uh, almost put him in the top five just for that category. Yes, and he made one of my favorite DC movies, Aquaman, as well. So I had to bring that's that right. Up. That's no. right. <laughs> no, you're not as into that one, but I'm a huge. Fan. I got to rewatch it. Who's making the second one? Is it James Wan? Again? It's him. Yeah, he's coming back. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. So I'll run down this last list is the runners up what what i called the runners up list okay gotcha <laughs> these guys man these were some of these were so hard they moved around multiple times and <laughs> yeah. i ultimately had to go with just personal favorite which again i went back to that question of which one do i rewatch their movies the most and so that's mm-hmm. how i ended up with my top 5 but the runners up were number 1 richard donner who i'm repping with the goonies shirt nice. here yeah that's um, a good good one yeah yeah, richard yeah donner, sure goonies is great you know he kicked off the comic book movie f- thing with superman in 78 he did a horror movie called the omen which is really scary oh. <laughs> um he did uh, lethal weapon that whole franchise those all, all yeah, four those are all good um scrooge the christmas movie we just talked about with bill murray great yep. one yep and then uh, more recently he did a great bruce willis film called 16 blocks oh that um, is good man yeah that's that is, i have that on dvd <laughs> yeah, in my head, that is the final Die Hard movie. Um, it's yeah. so good. The last good one, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> right. So he was so class, close to me. He just passed away last year, or um, in 2021, at the age of 91. So he had a long, long life, long career, yeah. um, made a lot of great movies. So he was very close to making it, uh, as was Clint Eastwood, one of my favorites. Uh, he's still making movies at 92, which is incredible. Um, he... <laughs> He's made some great ones going back to his Westerns like Outlaw Josie Wales, um, more recently Unforgiven, which is probably my favorite mm-hmm. Western of all time. Uh, Gran Torino uh, just directed so many great movies that most of which he also starred in. And, uh, you know, to do both right. is what an extra challenge to, to, you know, act as the main character and direct the rest of the cast and crew right. is just incredible. So he was very close to making it as well. Um, Ridley Scott, we we mentioned, um, he's made some of my favorite movies, Blade Runner, Alien, Gladiator, um, so many good ones. I really like um, Billy Wilder. This is an older director. Um, he passed away in 2002 at 95 years old, but he made classics like Devil Indemnity, The Apartment, Sunset Boulevard. Um, he was a writer director, so he wrote his own scripts and then directed them as well. Wow. Um, so he's a great one. Another great classic director, John Huston. Um, he made movies like the African queen, asphalt jungle, treasure of the Sierra Madre, the man who would be King worked with tons of great actors. He was an actor himself as well. And so he wasn't usually the starring role. He usually wasn't in his own movies. He was usually in other people's movies, but he would every once in a while pop up in his own as well. And, uh, so he's a great one. Alfred Hitchcock, very hard to cut him from the list. He's such I'm a great surprised one. he's not your top five. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It was so tough, difficult yeah. to not include him. Um, he's a great one. Stanley Kubrick. Mm. Wow. Incredible filmmaker. Um, groundbreaking. Some groundbreaking movies. 2001 A Space Odyssey and so many great ones. Uh, John Ford. He's known mostly for his Westerns, but he made a couple of kind of different, more dramatic movies that weren't straight Westerns um, as well. Last two I'll mention, Michael Curtiz. He's another classic director, made Casablanca, um, Adventures of Robin Hood, and White Christmas, some of his most popular movies. And then the uh, last one I'll mention is Joe Johnston. Um, oh, he true. made Rocketeer, Jumanji, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, uh, Page Master, Jurassic Park 3, Captain America, the first Avenger. So my yeah, childhood is kind of wrapped up in him more than I think just about <laughs> anybody else. Uh, all those great movies he made in the 90s that I grew up watching. So one more honorable mention in this uh, category is um, 
Robert Rodriguez. This guy is one of my favorite directors. I read this book, Rebel Without a Crew. It is huh. so cool. It's all about how he made his first movie, El Mariachi, which I have on Blu-ray. Oh, sure. Um, and uh, that kicked off his Mexico trilogy, yeah. um, which he ended up making. And then he ended up making Spy Kids and, uh, you know, all kinds of just such cool movies. To me, he's the coolest, probably the coolest filmmaker because he just does so many interesting things with shots and way he edits and the music. Uh, and what's cool about him is his now he's got many children. I think he has six kids and they all work on his movies with him. So oh, cool. um, one of them's an editor. One of them does the music. One of them <laughs> does, you know, all kinds, they all do all kinds of different stuff. So um, he's a very, very much a, a filmmaker who inspires me. Um, and uh, so I had to mention Robert Rodriguez, big fan of his movies. Um, yeah, those are my runners up. Any one of those could have been in this top five. So yeah, those are those are the last ones I'll mention before we get into our list. Which which ones did you have? I've got a couple more just in a, sort of a drama category. And, we, okay. you, and one of them is Ridley Scott. You were just talking about, obviously. Mm. And he, yeah, he's the one that did the first Alien. Uh, obviously yeah. kicked off that franchise, which spawned um, 19 films or something like that. <laughs> uh, no. And then, um, yeah, I mean, Gladiator was the movie of the year that year oh, when it came out. Great. So oh, amazing. Partly yeah. due to Hans Zimmer, but yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, and then um, Black Hawk Down, Robin Hood, yeah. the 2010 one. Would I, actually, I actually like that movie. I um, do too. Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a lot. The Martian is one I've seen two or three times. And every time I watch it, it, it just, yeah, I get more impressed by it. That is know? a good one. That's one of my wife's favorites, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good one. yeah. 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 Um, I like it. Um, and he also did um, the follow-ups in the Alien series. He did Prometheus and Alien Covenant, which right. I like a little bit. Um, I don't know what you think of them. Yeah. Visually, they're great. I think yeah, story-wise, yeah. they're a little wonky. I'm not a huge fan sure. of where they do what they do with the characters and story, but yeah. um yeah they look great he's got that vision um so yeah. uh then the other one i mentioned I, I can't remember if we brought up zemeckis or not um, oh no we is, haven't yeah yeah oh man it was hard to cut him let me tell you <laughs> yeah really hard <laughs> I mean, uh, i'm very surprised he's not on your list yeah exactly yeah <laughs> i mean obviously back to the future forrest gump uh what lies beneath and cast away in the same year brilliant yeah. <laughs> uh polar express um beowulf have you seen that oh yeah i own that yeah that's a good one. Oh yeah that yeah. is a good one yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, he did the walk, which I don't think you would seen. But I really oh yeah, I still haven't it. seen that. Yeah, I need to see yeah, it. Yeah, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and controversially, I liked his Pinocchio. <laughs> so oh right, right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was very impressed by it. Uh, yeah, I, it wasn't a five star movie, but sure, sure. I know we split on that one, but yeah. that's okay. Uh, yeah. So that kind of rounded out my um, honorable mentions. Yeah, he did great with um, Romancing the Stone as well. It's one of his first. I think that was his oh. first movie. Um, I own that one as right. well. So yeah, I'm a big fan of of him as well. Good yeah. filmmaker. All right. So now that honorable mentions are out of the way, uh, an exhaustive list there of honorable mentions. Uh, check out all those directors if you haven't. Let's go ahead and jump in to our top five. And Bert, why don't you kick us off with your number five favorite director of all time? Okay, I, I shall do that. Um, well, I'm going to start talking talking about comedy here um and and there's there's a lot of directors that direct comedy um and and several are sort of like repeat directors that you see doing comedy and i would say that chris columbus is the one that has hit the well more than most and made so many good movies so great i'll pick. just run a few down yeah yep. mrs doubtfire bicentennial man nine months home alone one and two now he did the Harry Potter uh, one and two. I don't think he directed any more than that. No, right? he just did the first two. Yep. So he also shows a lot of range with that. He even did the Percy Jackson film. That's right. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you've seen Pixels. Have you seen Pixels? I have not. No, I have not. I have not. I would recommend that actually. Okay. It's okay. way better than it should be. Okay. And uh, I feel it's a, a good comedy. Very good comedy. Okay. With some okay. great visuals that are fantastic in 3d oh uh, either cool. way uh it's a good one of adam sandler's better films okay great so, um yeah just just a long list of comedies and and uh he just knows what he's doing there's no point in his films where you feel like the the story really goes sideways or the comedy really falls off i mean right um he's just uh he just knows how to make a movie for a mainstream audience and it's it's not i i'm I, i'm sure it's hard to do a drama but when you're doing comedy, I feel like there's an extra layer you have to think about because you right. can't just present the story and use your vision. You have to also yeah. think, is this going to be funny? And right. is it going to be funny for a lot of people? Right. And so yeah. then what goes into that? I mean, not just the script, but you've got to have the right actors. 
you have to know when that take the, the take that you're seeing live, you have to judge that and decide, yeah, we got it. I mean, I can only imagine the pressure. Yeah. You know, we've Incredible. seen so many comedies that fail. <laughs> right. And aren't just aren't funny, you know? Yeah. Uh, so being able to, uh, to do that and, and telling a good story like home alone, you know, has kind of, it's kind of a heartwarming tail when you get down to it and yeah and some of these i mean same with mrs doubtfire and some of right. these others right yeah uh, i was gonna I, say there is there is some drama in those you know that that's real uh, yeah really emotional exactly yeah right and i think that that helps with the comedy is when you buy when you buy the, the story in front of you yeah then the natural situations the comedy you know jumps out even more at you so right um uh, so yeah chris columbus i think he's the man uh for comedy yeah, I, I I agree. He's a great, great director. So many great movies, like you mentioned, a good um, array of different types of movies, too, even though many of them do would fall into the comedy category. Um, like I said, they, they, they have range to them um, and uh, always gets great performances. I mean, that Robin Williams performance in Mrs. Doubtfire is one of the best I think he's ever given. And he's been in some great movies um yeah. and so yeah excellent excellent selection uh, and and he works so well with with children which is yeah something yeah, that's right. very different you know don't work with animals and kids right, right? isn't that like the <laughs> right. thing yeah so the thing, yeah uh yeah he he's he's done done it and done it very well um the harry potter movies especially those first two are just i mean those kids they hadn't really done much acting before and so mm. uh it's pretty incredible right. to see what he was able to get out of them and then of course macaulay culkin yeah. and home alone and all the rest of it. So yeah, excellent choice. Excellent choice. Yeah, fa- favorite film is Mrs. Doubtfire by yeah. far. I saw that twice in the theater. And okay, it's just cool. to this day, I mean, especially that dinner scene, I mean, at the end. Yeah. But the whole movie is just, it's yeah, it's got to be Robin Williams' crowning achievement, right? I mean, in his career. I, I uh, think so. As far so. as comedy goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, even otherwise, honestly. I mean, it's, it's up there with some of his yeah. best work. Um, I had not seen that movie until I got married. My wife showed it to me. That was one that she watched when she was younger that I hadn't seen for whatever reason and gotcha. watched it. And now it's been added to the collection. So yeah, it's a good yeah, one. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, I'll jump in with my number five. Uh, this is a director um, who passed away back in 1977. So he's been dead quite a while. Um, he is one of these directors from the golden age that I selected. His name is Howard Hawks. And so oh, sure. um, I've got a visual aid here. I'll, uh, I'll bring over my stack of Howard Hawks films. Mm. Um, that's my Howard Hawks collection as it stands now. Um, I'm hoping to add many more of his movies to my collection, but um, I just kind of wanted to run through these and show you what he's done. He's done bringing up baby. So this is a classic, what was called screwball comedy back in the thirties, 1938. Mm. This one was released. Catherine Hepburn, uh, Cary Grant, both star in this one. This was really the prototype for what we call romantic comedies now. So the rom-com genre okay. really started okay. here with this kind of silly situation that they find themselves in and you know they don't really like each other at first and end up falling in love that whole thing. That's one of his movies totally changing gears. The next year, 39, he made this movie Only Angels Have Wings, also with Cary Grant and uh, Gene Arthur. And so this is a totally different type of movie. This is like an an adventure film. It's all about these pilots in South America that have to fly these dangerous routes, uh, taking cargo to people. And um, it has a romantic element to it, has a lot of drama, has great, um, well, at the time, great special effects, incredible kind of um, effects that no one had seen before with the with the flying sequences. So um, this is another, this is probably my favorite of his. Then he made His Girl Friday, kind of another one of these rom-coms, a lot of real okay. fast, snappy, quick dialogue. Um, that he was known for directing um, really good. And then um, he did movies with Humphrey Bogart, like The Big Sleep. Uh, it's kind of a film noir mystery type film. Um, wow. To Have and Have Not, also with Bogart, uh, another great one. This one's almost a remake of uh, Casablanca. It has a lot of similar similarities to Casablanca, okay. but it's a really good movie. Um, and then he went branched out to, to do Westerns. And he did, this is probably one of my top five favorite Westerns called Red River made in 1948. Um, So this is John Wayne, uh, who he would team up with on, I think, four more Westerns in his career. And uh, it's just a great movie. It's about a cattle drive across the West and all the Mm -hmm. dangers that they encounter. Really, really great movie. Criterion put out this really nice box that actually includes uh, the book that it's based on, too. So um, yeah, really, really nice box set from Criterion there. But 
Yeah, just a great director. Um, and one thing that'll be kind of common among the directors that I picked is they're all um, uh, very versatile. So they, mm-hmm. they didn't really that just is, stay... He is versatile. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He, he did all kinds of different types of movies and he did that all very, very well. And so, you know, he, he kind of had a just a straightforward type style, just very high quality, everything in his movies, meaningful stories, well-defined characters uh, that you cared about. And so, yeah, all, all the genres he did, he just did really well in. And so, uh, again, very versatile filmmaker, um, you know, fast paced storytelling, uh, great dialogue, innovative special effects work. Uh, he wa- he did win an Oscar for his film Sergeant York, um, which is stars Gary Cooper. It's a really good World War One movie. If you haven't checked it out, I'd recommend that. Just look at that stack I just went through. Check out some of those. Only Angels Have Wings would be at the top of my list if you could only watch one. This would be the one to pick up. Criterion did a great job with this release. And so, uh, yeah, number three, number five is um, Howard Hawks. That's a good one. And as usual, it's good that you have some of the history of seeing the older films because I have not watched as many. <laughs> sure, sure. Anywhere close as what you have. So that's good to bring in those guys because there are some, obviously, many great films of the past Definitely. Uh, to bring in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely wanted to have a, a, an older kind of uh, old school guy in there. And so he was he's the one that raised, rose to the top very quickly uh, gotcha. when I was looking at, at not just what's in my collection, but just what I've seen. So, um, yeah, that's my number five. What's your number four? My number four, uh, um, you know, we had our podcast um, near Halloween time for our, our top horror films. Right. And we did one. Did we do separate ones for horror comedy and then regular horror? I think we did. Yeah, we did. Yep. Okay, so my number four is Sam Raimi. Great, so I went with yes, the comedy one. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And uh, run a few down. I think you mentioned them too, but um, Spider Man one, two, and three, uh, Drag Me to Hell, which is so good. Yeah, uh, it's a horror see comedy. That. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and then the most recent Doctor Strange film was terrific. He he handled that adeptly. Um, yeah. I like Oz, great and powerful. A lot of people don't like it. Um, and then uh, going back to the 80s, Dark Man was good. Um, in the 90s, he did a great uh, sort of thriller called A Simple Plan. It's kind of a drama thriller. Okay. That's yeah. really good with um, Bill Paxton mm. and Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, and then uh, obviously the Evil Dead uh, trilogy. Right. Um, and if I could mention one guy that if the TV comes on and there's no sound and you're trying to figure out who the director is, it's this guy for me. <laughs> right. Uh, right. Because yes. uh, his, his use of, camera angles um practically uh right. to not not cgi'd mm-hmm. are just so inspired and not even not even necessary sometimes right. Right. <laughs> like in that first um uh evil dead film there, there's a camera angle like inside the car uh it's just so bananas that I, I had to rewind it to figure out where i was even looking at the characters <laughs> right. and it's just you know especially for a guy that was just starting out with you know six hundred thousand trying to make this film i mean it's not my favorite film ever but i really appreciate it for his filmmaking and i think that's why he's so high on the list is because even a film that isn't a you know necessarily a a great film there's there's a lot to appreciate by this guy um and he does have a lot of uh, variety in his um even though he does a lot of uh horror i mean a simple plan is is it's it's a pretty much a drama you know and he he gets into some other things like that Mm -hmm. uh fantasy with with the oz film right and um spider-man one is one of my favorite favorite films of all time and to me it just yeah. uh i did like x-men but when i saw spider-man yeah in 02 i think it was that was the film where i was like wow i hope there's more <laughs> films like this right exactly and it turns out there were a few more coming after it yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh and and, and and um there's one shot uh that i'll point out specifically in that film and that's the the cafeteria scene uh where Oh. Um, the guy's coming by and the tray flips up and then he catches the things and catches the girl. I mean, right. it's just so brilliant in such a Sam Raimi way. Yeah. Uh, so it's one of my favorite shots of his, but yeah, yeah. I mean, Sam Raimi just puts that signature stamp hard on most of his films and yeah. you can, you can definitely see it and feel it. And, and sometimes it's even a camera angle to make you laugh, which is so interesting. Yeah, that's it's true. So, yeah. I mean, not that it's the only time it's been done, but it'll be so bananas in a film that didn't necessarily call for that. Right. I don't know. I just like his vision. I like what he does yeah. behind the camera. And Definitely. Uh, so he's by number four. Excellent pick. Yeah. Such a specific style he has that, uh, yeah, is easy to point out in really any of his movies. You can see it. And some is highlighted more than others. But yeah, even in his Western, Quick and the Dead, he's got those snap zooms and like these camera angles that are very 
Sam Raimi. And uh, <laughs> right, so, yeah, right. yeah, I, I have a lot of fun with his movies. A lot of I own m- many of them, if not most of them. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Great, great pick for your number four. I want to throw out one more thing, too. We, we've mentioned yeah. him or we've mentioned uh, I've mentioned it a couple of times in the past that he went to Michigan State University, which is I'm a fan of. Um, and I kind of went to the sister school for Michigan State anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so um, I read up on that a little bit. He only went there three semesters and left to go make the evil dead. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he literally went, he, he was at the college and thought, right. uh, eh, I don't know. I think I'll go make a horror movie down in Tennessee. So, uh, so I found that interesting. I found a little more about that. That is uh, funny. That is funny. Share. Yeah. All right. Great. Number four pick Bert with Sam Raimi. Um, my number four pick is another director who has since passed away, uh, passed away in 1998 at the age of 88. Um, He's a Japanese director by the name of Akira Kurosawa. This director is highly influential on many of my favorite filmmakers, including George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, um, Zack Snyder. uh, A lot of directors look up to him. And uh, he's a director that um, also did quite a few different types of movies. Um, He's a master of visual storytelling. He made some really groundbreaking films in Japan during the 1950s specifically, but he worked all the way through the 1980s. He made some heart pounding action films and some very contemplative dramas as well. Um, Let me show you my collection of his movies here. Um, I own his most of his samurai movies. Um, I want to get a couple more of his that I've seen recently, his more dramatic movies, but um, Rashomon is a great um, classic film from 1950. Um, This is kind of one of the first movies that did the, you know, story from multiple perspectives. And so, uh, you know, it's all black and white. It's again, one of the first movies to kind of employ that type of narrative. Um, in an interesting way. So Rashomon is great. Seven Samurai, this one I've talked about many times before, probably one of the most influential movies ever. Uh, It's an epic action movie. It is uh, 207 minutes. So it's over three hours, uh, made in 1954, all black and white again, uh, but just great, great action sequences, great characters, um, great story, classic story that's been retold time and again. If you've seen A Bug's Life, if you've seen Three Amigos, they're basically the same kind of plot, <laughs> essentially. Uh, they kind of borrow from it a lot. So that's a that's a great one. A must see. Um, Throne of Blood. It was a really interesting movie. Very different for him. Um, it's actually an adaptation of Shakespeare's Macbeth, um, just told from feudal Japan. And so uh, there's all these kind of very um, weird dreamlike sequences to it. Uh, it's just got a very unique visual style. Um, and this actor, Tashiro Mufuni, um, he was in Seven Samurai. He was in Rashomon. He's been in most of Kurosawa's films. They're an actor-director collaboration that went on for many years in the, both of their careers. Mm-hmm. So that's another good one. One that directly inspired Star Wars is The Hidden Fortress. This is a movie that if you watch, you'll basically come to realize that the two main characters are R2-D2 and C-3PO <laughs> and they kind of gotcha. bicker back and forth. They go on this journey right. uh, that they get caught up in. And so right. this one is is really, really fun. If you're a Star Wars fan, it's a, it's a must-see. Two more that I really like, uh, uh, Yojimbo and Sanjuro. This is a, the first film in its sequel. Also st- starring Toshiro Mifune as a samurai that kind of wanders into this town it's very much a, a western type feel to it he wanders into this town this lone samurai and he has to kind of get involved in this big you know feud that's going on in this town um, it was remade yojimbo was remade by sergio leone uh, who i mentioned earlier Italian, italian filmmaker known for his spaghetti westerns into a fistful of dollars which is the first in the uh, man with no name trilogy with clint eastwood so um, that's that's another very influential one. Two of his dramas, Kiru, is a great one, uh, which deals a lot with with mortality. It's about a guy that finds out he's got a terminal disease and kind of how he deals with that in his life. And then um, one that I just watched recently, High and Low, which is about a, uh, a kidnapping that happens. And so mm. all these are, are you know again very different types of movies. Uh, the samurai films, even within them. Are, is a lot of a lot of kind of uh, versatility and, and and differences between them, but they're all you know they can be epic. Some of them can be very intimate, but they're they're all you know human relatable stories uh, at the heart of them. So th- those are some of some of his movies. 
And uh, the definitive one for me, again, is Seven Samurai um, that, that, that everyone should watch and check out if you're into movies. So that's number four, Akira Kurosawa. Yeah, this is a good one. I know you talk about him a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, very influential. I have seen The Seven Samurai, but it's okay. been many years. Um, okay. That's probably the only one of his I've seen. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Let's jump into your number three, Bert. What you got? What was Ron Howard? That nice. Okay, that. great. Yeah. yeah. And, and just, um, uh, you know, his storytelling and execution is pretty much flawless. Um, yeah. He's great at handling these sort of uh, middle to upper budget um, studio films. Right. Um, they're exciting. Uh, he also keeps them very well grounded. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, he's a master at that. Um, I, I, let me throw out a few, uh, some of these you mentioned, but sure. uh, Cocoon, did you ever see Cocoon? I still one? haven't seen that one. No, okay. I haven't. Okay. Yeah. I think you'd like it. Um, uh, Willow's good. Uh, Parenthood was decent. Backdraft was tremendous. That was all oh, yeah. I was talking about uh, back in 90 or whenever it came out. I yeah, saw it at like least that. twice in the theater, I think. Um, Apollo 13, fantastic. Um, mm. Ransom a very tense um, uh, kidnapping movie. Okay. Um, you have not seen that one? have not seen that one. Yeah, it's Mel really Gibson though, right? One. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very good. It. He kind of turns the tables on the kidnappers um, in unique ways. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, Ed TV is a great comedy. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Phenomenal. Yeah I've, yeah, I've seen it so many times over the years. Okay. I love it. Um, <laughs> uh, and then you mentioned A Beautiful Mind. Cinderella mm. Man is a good one. Oh, yeah. Um, I enjoyed Rush. Um, yep. in the heart of the sea was another good one. Mm, we yes. talked, um, last year, a few times about hillbilly elegy uh-huh. and 13 lives all around just solid. Like he's just, I don't know if I call him like a, a, a gun for hire, but I mean, if you need like a good story that you want to appeal to a large audience, um, and have it actually be, you know, quality and, and, you know, all the effects, like all oh, CGI seamless, like he's your guy. I mean, he, right. Uh, yeah he's just brilliant at that kind of stuff yeah i agree that i've heard him referred to as a journeyman filmmaker where he kind of oh well, he doesn't yes, there you go mm-hmm. he, he doesn't have totally unique style to him but right whenever right. he goes out he just makes a great movie yeah. yeah yeah he's one of those guys that if if i don't know anything about the film but he's directing it i'll be like oh this is a ron howard film oh it's yeah. probably going to be good then you, know, right, like you can right. almost always count on that yes exactly yeah and i'd say my favorite film of his is probably a beautiful mind yeah. That blew my mind, my mind. Uh, <laughs> when I saw it in the theater, I saw it twice. I saw that one twice in the theater. Wow. Um, yeah, he, he's just that all around. Yeah, like I guess he described it best himself, journeyman. Yeah. Um, he doesn't, uh, uh, he, he, we talked before about he's kind of the master of the true story. Right, uh, right. Yeah, he does a lot of those. Yeah, it is, it, the, the pacing's always good. Um, but anyway, yeah, just all around, just an all around great um, directing effort every time he's, up for a bat you know yeah i agree and and he's another one who's he doesn't get enough credit i think for being an innovator because he really does um i'm thinking of apollo 13 yeah, movies where yeah. you know he did push the boundaries of, of the technology even willow did that um a lot mm-hmm. his work with ilm there on, on some of those special effects so um yeah e- excellent choice right. excellent choice he's been in the business for his whole life too which is kind of right. cool yeah, andy griffith yep from right. way back as a kid <laughs> i used to watch him uh on reruns on that <laughs> show so yeah <laughs> right great all right great number three pick um my number three is a living director <laughs> he is a 58 year old filmmaker from mexico by the name of guillermo del toro Oh, good pick. Um, yeah. Yeah. Guillermo, he he's he's great. I mean, I've seen every single one of his movies. He's made 12 films at this point. And okay. uh I, I think they're all great. This is a guy with a very specific style. I mean, you talk about guys like Sam Raimi sure. who have that that is true. That look about them that you can just tell as soon as you put that movie on that, yeah, this is Del Toro's Ooh. work for sure. Especially his creature work, you know? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I was definitely gonna mention yeah. that his creature work, his production design. There's always it's always so detailed um, and and so well done. Um, he's another guy who's gone across multiple genres as well. Um, he doesn't really just do one thing. He's done a bunch of different types of movies. He's a huge film buff. Um, I was looking at a list of some of his favorite movies. I wanted to run down some of them. Um, they all make a lot of sense if you know him and his work. Uh, Brazil from 1985, Bride of Frankenstein, um, Goodfellas. Jason and the Argonauts, Jaws, The Night of the Hunter, Paths of Glory, The Seventh Seal, Throne of Blood, which I just mentioned, and Time Bandits. Those are some of his favorite personal films for him. 
um, that he grew up on watching. So uh, again, they they make a lot of sense. I think if you know him, here's my collection of his movies as it stands now. Um, This is my, my stack of Del Toro's films. So um, Devil's Backbone Criterion put out this. I just got this for Christmas. This is, I I want to see that one. Yeah, you would, I think, really like this. It's a, it's yeah. more horror esque. It's, it's uh-huh. a ghost story, um, and uh, it all takes place uh, back in the the 1940s. So, um, really interesting film, really well done. Came out in 2001. So uh, this isn't his first movie, but it's I think his second or third. Um, okay. So Devil's Backbone, that's worth checking out. Yeah, um, it's on my list. Blade Two. So not the first or third, but he did the second Blade, <laughs> which is easily the best one. Um, I'm not a fan a of the... different than the first one. Then it's like, I, yeah, it's much more stylistic and okay. just okay. better overall, gr- better characters, better story, okay. better action, just yeah. everything that the first one did. Okay. The second one did better. You yeah. Know? Cause I gave up after the first one. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. You the, should, you should okay watch the me. second ones. Yeah. Second one's worth watching for sure. Okay. okay. Um, but that was another one of his earlier movies. Then he did Hellboy, um, which yeah. I'm a huge fan of. Uh, Ron yeah. Perlman, especially in this role, uh, is right. just great. Uh, the, the makeup on him is incredible. Uh-huh. Um, all the creatures, Abe Sapien, played by Doug yeah. Jones, is a Dave, great David character. Hyde Pierce. Um, yeah, he voices him. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He voices yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Doug Jones plays him on on set. And uh, gotcha. oh, right, okay. right. Okay. So yeah, they do a great job with this movie. Mm-hmm. This is just a fun comic book film. I mean, it's super pulpy yeah. and silly and. But it does have some scary moments, too. You know, it's got a little bit of horror tinge to it. Um, really fun. Uh, Hellboy I just got yeah, that. on. This Hellboy's is a new good. 4K I just got. It's the 15th anniversary 4K. Okay. It has the director's cut um, uh, and a commentary by Del Toro on it as well. Yeah, I have the uh, the three disc DVD oh, special. Nice. OK, <laughs> OK, cool. And I used to brag about that 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's time no, to upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I haven't gotten rid of it. I still have it because I think. It's oh, cool. Package. cool. Yeah. Great. Next one I'll talk about um, is my favorite one, which is Pan's Labyrinth. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So Criterion put out this uh, just a few years back oh. on Blu-ray. 2006, this one was released and uh, it is just wonderful. Everything about it. It's this dark fairy tale. Um, yeah. It's got a, a harshness to it, a reality to it, but then it's got this fantastical element, this um, incredible, uh, like you're talking about creature work and design and just mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, amazing looking film uh great great movie great story and i love the i love the music in that one too oh yeah the score is, is fantastic oh, as well yeah yeah so absolutely good. then he um did his hellboy sequel the golden army which i actually do prefer to the first hellboy i think it is a little okay. better um yeah. as far as you know action effects all of that is just to kind of up the ante on it um gotcha. so yeah hellboy 2 is, is definitely worth watching uh this 4k looks it's one of the best looking 4ks i've ever seen the visuals are just stunning really? the color uh just really really good okay um then he did his big monster movie pacific rim um robots I'm versus big fan of that. i am too a lot of people don't yeah. like it this is probably the one of his that gets the most hate but man yeah. it is so much fun that blew me away in the theater i thought it was great yes i agree i agree it was incredible 3d on I it mean, was it's... great i remember seeing yeah, it in 3d it's... Right. It's at least a four star, if not four and a half for me. I mean, it's fantastic. I'm right there with you. Totally agree. If you're looking for a fun, crazy action movie, this is the one. This is one of my go to's. I've seen it Mm -hmm. multiple times. So that's a lot of fun. Um, And then uh, recently, very recently, did uh, Nightmare Alley, which is his kind of take on the Hollywood noir film. But it's very much his own take. It's very much a Del Toro movie. It has that creepy vibe to it deals with uh, the carnival you know it kind of a lot of it takes place in the carnival scene uh, <laughs> back in like the gotcha. 30s and 40s so yeah, yeah. Uh, it has that that weirdness to it but it's really really well done bradley cooper um kate blanchett tony hmm. collette i mean a great great cast willem defoe's in this as well so um okay. definitely you mentioned worth... that one recently didn't you didn't you yeah i did in the last yeah. couple weeks or something yeah because like i just i just got the 4k that's for right. christmas so oh that's right yeah yeah, yeah. Gotcha. so yeah all in all, great director. He won Best Director for The Shape of Water, another movie I really like. Um, he's decent, uh, he's uh, just a very singular filmmaker, very visionary, very um, just different. And so, uh, yeah, highly recommend checking out his movies. His new Pinocchio, again, I'll mention it again, right now on Netflix, I think it's phenomenal. It's a stop-motion animated film, the first one he's ever done. 
And okay. again, the detail, the craft that goes into it is on another level. So um, definitely check that one out if you haven't. That's a good pick. And I should have had him in my honorable mention. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Well, um, we're ready to move on to your number two, Bert. Who is it? I'm going to go with a guy, a little known guy named Christopher Nolan. Yes. <laughs> that you already Excellent. mentioned. Yeah, choice. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, boy. Um, this is a guy that doesn't have, um, like a, like a really long list of films either. Right. Uh, but probably the guy that has, um, made the films that, that I like the most, um, with, with a small number of films. Right. Um, you know, okay. He, I'll list the films that are in my top 10 films of all time. That'd be interstellar Batman begins dark Knight. Those are my top 10. I think inception is in my top 20. Um, prestige and memento probably aren't that far behind that probably my top 50 or so right. um uh, dunkirk was good um but i mean it's it's those um several films uh that are just super high on my list that that makes uh me turn to him for for putting him so high on my top five yeah um and it's uh it's his originality um obviously usually with his brother writes all of his own material right uh, or takes something like the batman series and puts a completely different spin on it yeah maybe changed um may, maybe set the path for a lot of superhero movies to be dark oh yeah um, i will say x-men kind of did that at the beginning sure you know? sure um but uh and then and he has a way of challenging the viewer um mm, which is really yes. great obviously with the layering right the, uh non-linear style mm -hmm. um when i first saw memento i wasn't going to see memento but i saw mm. i think it was a cisco and ebert and they were talking about it and they talked it up so much that I went to see it. But I'm kind of glad they told me that it's told in reverse because I, right. I, I would have been, I, I maybe I would have figured out what's right. going on, but it's not even in reverse. I mean, if you look at the ordering of the scenes, right, right, the main scenes are in reverse. Yeah. But then there's some, I think, black and white scenes that go in normal order that are that's mixed. right i mean it's crazy right it's crazy but i love it i, I still haven't figured yeah. it all out but i love it <laughs> um <laughs> and so uh yeah so the layering and um he he uh his, his cgi he uses is seamless there's never a time where you think that uh it, it is um unnecessary or sticks out yes. um he's one of those guys that pulls that off and and he also prefers practical um action scenes um you know using real vehicles and that kind of thing so yep. i mean i could go on and on um uh, but i just uh usually love not just even like but i usually love everything that he does with yeah. the rare exception of like tenant which i will revisit because i just didn't understand it at all the yeah. first time i saw it <laughs> yeah that that movie requires a rewatch that's like one of those that you right. almost you have to rewatch it because if you don't yeah it's <laughs> it's a lot going on there i own tenant and i think it's great i've seen it at least three or four times now so oh, okay. okay um yeah i really like it yeah what a great director i mean he's kind of <laughs> He's one of these directors that it's like, oh, is the new Nolan movie coming out? Like people talk about him that way. They don't talk about his movie so much as him, um, which right. is really rare. So uh, yeah, it's anything he does, he, there's going to be an audience. That's why studios are willing to put up all kinds of ridiculous money for him to go make a movie about some guy named Oppenheimer. You know, it's like uh, pretty incredible. So yeah, he, he's right. great. He, uh, he definitely changed cinema i mean he changed the landscape of movies over his career specifically with the dark knight trilogy and bringing that kind of grounded gritty realism to the comic book genre um which is still going strong today so um yeah movie movie fanatics like you and me owe a lot to him i think because of what he's done with his movies and how intelligent they are i mean they're just really smart he takes his time he doesn't rush anything you can tell he really is methodical about how he makes movies and uh, uh but there's always a, a a story there to tell that's that's worth telling you know and and characters you can relate to and that kind of thing so yeah another one of these guys that you know like we're saying is, is innovative and um just uh just really smart with with all the choices that he makes yeah and i there, there's a, a i guess a, a group of people that feel that all modern films are garbage and I would say, go watch the average Christopher Nolan film and tell me where tell me where the garbage is in that. <laughs> right. <laughs> because right. I think it's I think they're all pretty great. So yeah. 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 
Definitely. Good pick for your number two. Um, so now we're on to my number two, who is a good friend of Christopher Nolan. His name is Zack Snyder. Um, mm. Zack Snyder, uh, 56-year-old filmmaker. He's uh, doing some great work recently, especially, I think, over his career. It's so interesting to see him evolve as a filmmaker. And I still like like all the movies that he's come out with. So I'll pull out my Snyder collection here. I have... Almost all of his movies. I don't have his Netflix movie because it's not available on Blu-ray or 4K. Uh, unfortunately, Army of the Dead is not. Oh, not oh out, it's not. But, okay. Yeah, it's not. And Netflix usually doesn't. Sometimes they'll release one, but it's pretty rare. They want people to subscribe and watch, obviously. So, yeah, yeah. Um, look, Snyder, I mean, he's one of the most visionary filmmakers, I think, because he has such a specific vision. On all of his movies, he's another one of these guys. You turn on a movie by him and you're going to know pretty quickly this was a Snyder film. Um, Tons of striking visuals. Uh, Just the imagery here is is on another level, I think, um, from just about anybody else. What's that? Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. To what you just said is I I don't know if there's anybody better visually, you know, right? Yeah, exactly. That's my point. I, I don't I can't think of anyone who has these kind of like. They Not just stick in that. your mind yeah, so yeah. you know clearly, and 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 every image tells a story. Every image is a painting in a way. You know, he's he's a guy that right. studied art. You know, before he became a filmmaker, really. And so okay. yeah, and so sense. he he became obsessed with kind of you know Renaissance era paintings and and statues of you know Greek oh. gods and all that kind of stuff. He's big into mythology. That's pretty okay. clear from especially his more recent movies. Um, you know, he's he's obsessed with that kind of, you know, mythological storytelling. The, the modern myth is comic books, right? That's our modern kind of take on these larger than life yeah. characters, these heroes. So um, his right. superhero movies are kind of just, again, they're on another level um, from, mm-hmm. from to me, everything else that's out there. So his film's very them- thematic, very artistic, uh, very cool. <laughs> again, he just kind of goes for what he thinks looks cool. And I think that's why they they end up being so memorable and and striking to us because they just uh, right. you know he's doing doing the best work he can do. So um, his films definitely have a darkness to them. They they're they're gritty. You could tell you know they're kind of realistic. They take things very seriously. Usually, um, there's levity right. in his movies, but um, overall, I think he 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 takes this kind of stuff, this this work and these stories very seriously, and. Um, so he's similar to, to Nolan in many ways, I think, actually. Um, and that's probably why, why they're such good friends. Nolan actually came up with the idea for Man of Steel and gave it to Snyder to direct because he thought... And Nolan produced, right? Nolan yeah. produced, yeah. And, he, and he, I think yeah, he has a co-writing yeah. credit as well or a okay. story by okay. credit or something like that yeah. because he and uh, David Goyer, who was one of the writers on Dark Knight, came up with the Man of Steel kind of basic idea of that story. So yeah, they've they've been you know close pals ever since. But... Um, yeah, he, he just tells beautiful, impactful, powerful stories, you know, larger than life characters. He challenges his audiences as well. I think that's evidence from uh, especially Batman v Superman, one of his most divisive films, um, which, uh, you know, you and I are both obviously huge fans of. But, um, you know, it's it's there's a lot going on in that movie. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. So yeah. um, so, so it, it, it is challenging for, for to, to watch as an audience member, especially when you're coming in with your own ideas of these characters and this world and all that. So, uh, but he makes movies for himself. And I think that's another thing that makes a great director is they're not just worried about what is the audience going to think? What are the producers thinking? What is the studio going to think? You know, they're really just there telling a story that they want to tell um, that they want to see on screen. So, um, you know, out there is this whole idea of auteur filmmaking, the auteur theory of filmmaking where it's, one person making the movie and obviously we know tons of people make a movie um but there is some truth that i think in in the way that um they're uniting under one guy's vision right and so i think uh snyder and and all the the people were mentioning they can communicate that vision to others and get it on screen so um he does that very well obviously um i'll go through these really quick dawn of the dead his first movie, a remake of the George Romero uh, classic. I like that uh, movie, Gone of the Dead. This is really good. It all takes place in a mall. These people are yep. trying to survive the zombie apocalypse. Um, really, really good. Um, then he made 300, 
three hundred. I have that exact packaging, by the way. Oh, I've do you really? Three on Blu-ray. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I like Troy as well. Alexander's okay. Um, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Troy's decent. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, but three hundred's the best out of these three, and it's oh, yeah. one of his it's better tremendous. movies. I mean, it's it's one of these that really broke new ground with digital photography, right. digital backgrounds. You know, right? Um, just incredible looking movie. Um, well, that's one of my. It's, I think that's in my top twenty three hundred. I mean, it's yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, he makes movies that I want to see visually. Like, I want to see what he's right. putting on the screen. <laughs> yeah, you can watch him with the sound off. It's like you just right. throw it on and watch it because it's just that right. good lo- looking. Um, Watchmen, which I know you're not as, as crazy about, but yeah. I'm a huge fan. The director's cut is great. There's I don't know. Visuals if, in it. Did you see the director's cut? Is that the one you saw? Or? No, no. Okay. Yeah, I would recommend the director's cut. It adds at least, okay. I think, probably at least 20 to 30 minutes of new footage because this is a three hour okay. movie. Um, yeah. Maybe it's intense. It's yeah. it's not for everybody, you know. I mean, it's very, very uh, graphic in, in its depictions of of violence and and all kinds of other stuff. But um, the story he's telling, the story it's based on by um, Alan Moore, a great comic book writer, uh, is amazing. It's an epic hmm. story, and uh, it's it was deemed by most to be unfilmable. Um, <laughs> most a lot of people wanted to make this into a movie, and when they tried to, they just couldn't do it so is that right um, well it took a guy like snyder to to pull it off and so uh yeah watchman is is pretty pretty amazing uh legend of the guardians this one doesn't get talked about a lot his only animated movie um really interesting i think it's beautiful looking first of all um mm-hmm. as all of his movies are but uh tells a pretty um interesting story as well very thematic um kind of dark for a, a pg movie but um but we're, worth checking out for sure um and then we've already talked about Sucker Punch on the channel multiple times. So uh, yeah. we don't have to go too deep into this, but this is another one I'm a, I'm a big fan of. Um, and then we've got, of course, his uh, trilogy of DC films, Man of Steel. Um, one that I've seen, I don't even know how many times. This is one I turn on all the time, especially now that I got the 4K. I've put it on a couple of times just since I got it. So um, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Ultimate Edition, the only version you should watch, the three-hour cut, um, is awesome, awesome movie. And this is this this is the 4K remastered version, um, oh, which has the, the IMAX sequences. Oh, so okay. uh, the the it opens up into the full IMAX aspect mm-hmm. ratio. Uh, so uh, well worth gotcha. worth checking out. And I think he did some different color grading on it to fix a couple things as well it was all director approved and it's got a commentary by snyder as well so um that's worth checking out and then of course Zack snyder's justice league one of my favorite movies ever uh the ultimate superhero movie um just a, a huge four hour um epic uh, superhero event um uh, which we never thought we'd get and we we did so yeah, yeah. um pretty great pretty great stuff you know he's he's one of my favorites because again all the reasons i just listed he's just one of a kind um so my number two Zack snyder yeah and i'll just say something real quick about yeah. him i you know action wise uh for for an action movie i feel like a lot of um those over time they kind of lose their luster because you know how this right. ends you've seen the same action scene yeah. his tend to get better yes and um the best example i can give is man of steel mm. I, at best that was a three star maybe the first time i saw it okay and i'd probably give it five stars now yeah that's where i'm at on it because <laughs> right. I just, the second time i watched it i was like whoa how did i miss the boat on this one you <laughs> right. know did i fall asleep during it or something <laughs> <laughs> which is unlikely uh but yeah. yeah and i it pains me to not have put him in my top five but yeah. at least you did so yeah tell. absolutely absolutely <laughs> yep all right let's move on bert now to your number one favorite director of all time who is it spielberg comma steven yes <laughs> so we both have the same number one that's awesome oh uh, yeah i guess i shouldn't be surprised um <laughs> goodness uh okay uh where do i even start right um yeah uh part of it is he's got so many i mean i wrote down there's at least 15 films of his that i really like Right. Um, and there's no other director that comes close to that. Yeah. So you look at like the longevity, you yeah. know, of, I mean, he was making films way back in the, well, you've seen some of some of his in the seventies. even. Yeah. But, yeah. So we're going on four decades of just film after film, after film, another right. one of these guys where um, if you don't know anything about it, if you go into the theater, you're like, what's Fablemans and you see it's Spielberg. 
you're going to go, oh, that's, it's probably going to be really good. Right. That one, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I don't know if there's a guy, you know, more than him that you could say that about uh, yeah. because he's made so many good ones. He, mm. he refuses to make a film that has poor production standards. There are a few that I would say are below, you know, like where I couldn't, I couldn't recommend it. Right. Um, you know, a, a variety of genres. He's great at scaring people. He's great at telling stories. He's great at making you laugh. Yeah. Um, his visuals are top notch. Um, yeah. he, he's super creative, the, you know, the camera angles, just even in his animated film. Um, what's the one that I, I um, raved about? Oh, uh, Tintin. Adventures of Tintin. Yeah. 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 Uh, even in that, in the animation is fantastic. Right. Um, we talked to the, uh, uh, late last year about, um, War of the Worlds and, and, and the shot, I'll call it, I guess. Right. Um, just, and by the way, someone on the group, uh, I forget who it was, um, pointed me to a YouTube video that, that shows how they did that. Oh, yeah. And I think I that thought, was Josh. Oh, that's great. I'll, yeah. yeah. Um, could be. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched the video. It still doesn't really tell you, though. It's right. Right. You, so I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of, you know, I, yeah. I love the behind the scenes stuff, but I'm kind of like, you know, I, he's just, he just pulled off magic there. Right. Because exactly. I still don't really know. <laughs> I mean, I want to know all of it. I want to know how he did all of it. And I, right, you know, right. But anyway, and, and that probably is my favorite film of his Minority Reports, yeah. uh, way up there, Jurassic mm. Park. I mean, but there's so many, yeah. so many, uh, over decades and decades. No one yeah. close, really. Yeah. Your thoughts? Yeah, I totally agree with all that. I mean, he's, he's, he's got a distinct style. He's got a true vision for all of his yeah. movies. He's worked in almost every genre. Um, yeah, yeah. and he's always, almost always knocked it out of the park. Uh, 1941 right. is his only, his only blemish. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't love but, BFG either, but I didn't hate it. Okay. It just wasn't for me, but yeah, yeah I'm the same rare, way about, you know, lost world, uh, is not, right, you know, one of my right. favorites hook is okay, but not great. You know, so he's got to talk about his, got... his bad films. That's how many good ones he's got. We got to <laughs> talk about the, the rare exceptions, right? <laughs> right. The rare exceptions, uh, because he's done, he's made over 35 films now. And yeah. so, uh, it's just, you know, the, the, the wealth of, of movies we have from him is pretty incredible. He's another one of these guys. That's a great collaborator. We've talked about Janusz Kaminski many times, Janusz. you know, Janusz. He's, great. <laughs> he's so good. Um, John Williams, of course, you know, that yep. is the longest running, I think, collaboration in film history. So, uh, so many great movies, uh, best director Oscars for Schindler's List and Saving Private Ryan. You know, he, he's made so many great ones that have, again, groundbreaking, you know, innovative, uh, but just great stories. I can watch anytime. Very emotional. Always, always draws me in to the characters and the story great at directing actors. You can tell he loves working with actors and actors love working with him. He's worked with Tom Hanks, I think like four or five, six times now. Um, he's worked with greats like Meryl Streep and um, a young Christian Bale in Empire of the Sun, you know? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he finds talent as well, you know? Uh, Harrison Ford, my favorite actor, my favorite film series, Indiana Jones. So I'll show you quickly. I'm going to try to get it in frame. My uh, My collection of, Spielberg piece. <laughs> it uh let's see if it'll fit nice there we go yeah there they are so um yeah that's the uh collection nice. i won't go through yeah, all well. these but yeah i've got um i've got his first film which is duel um it was made for tv originally but um they ended up releasing it in theaters because it was so good it's a really fun kind of thriller um sugarland express that's a good one too that he did before he did his breakout film jaws which of course Shot him to superstardom, the first blockbuster, you know, changed the game. Um, Close Encounters, that one's a lot of fun as well. Of course, all the Indiana Jones movies, uh, or the first four, at least, um, he directed as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've got E.T., we've got Schindler's List. You know, I mean, wow, what a difference in <laughs> types of movies. But, and, but, you know, I mentioned that the same oh, year... He did this. He did Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's crazy just, to me. What a bizarre experience that must have been. Um, yeah. Save It Private Ryan. Catch Me If You Can. It's one of my wife's that's favorites. She watches that one a lot. Um, Minority Report, you just mentioned. One of my favorite Tom Cruise films. Munich. This one I think yeah, is highly underrated. Too. I like that one a lot. Just got this on 4K. Um, I don't have it yet. Uh, uh, you got to get it. It looks incredible. <laughs> oh, man. I, I wonder if there'll be a steel book for it. Anyway, there probably is. They're probably yeah. Best Buy usually has those, but you okay. can find them on Amazon or anywhere usually. 
Yeah, this one's great. It, it retains all that film grain because it was shot on film. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not like, you know, your crystal clear picture, but it's it's got the grain intact, but it just looks great. The color okay. and everything is really okay. good. Um, War Horse, which I know you still haven't seen, right? Right. I have not. No. Yeah, that's that's well worth well worth watching. Um, we mentioned Ten Ten already. Yeah. Uh, Bridge of Spies. Really good Tom Hanks film. Uh, True Story. Mm -hmm. um the post another tom hanks one true story about the washington post um ready player one can't wait to get this on 4k mm -hmm. i watched i heard that one again recently in 3d yeah yeah so cool yeah, it's um, cool. yeah. <laughs> and then i just got this on 4k for christmas his new musical oh. first musical he's ever done so right, that's another right. genre you can check off his resume yeah. <laughs> musicals now um which is just incredible i mean the cinematography kaminsky just he took it to another level here. Really? I mean, yeah. It, I know you're not a musical guy, but watch it with the sound off. Whatever you need to do, just check out um, some of these shots here are really good. And okay. uh, and of course, I've got all the Indiana Jones movies now in this yeah. Steel K Steel Book 4K. Oh, nice, um, nice. So yeah, uh, he's on another level. I mean, what can we yeah. say about him? We did a whole podcast right. about him recently. If you want to learn more about Spielberg, his background, <laughs> uh, get more of our thoughts on our top five favorite Spielberg movies, you can go check that out. Um, anything else you wanted to add? I know. I think that about covers it. Yeah, I think so too. All right, folks. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey through our top five favorite film directors. This was a tough list to make, but we got through it. Uh, let us know your top five in the comments below. Give us that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos here at The Real World. We'll see you next time.